stories of J.G. Ballard. Tonight, low-flying aircraft. He's definitely playing some kind of deranged game with himself. You think so? Of course. The runway's far too short. But it doesn't seem to affect his takeoff. One more summer storm, like the one we had last week, and even more of the pier will be gone. It seems strange to build something out into the sea. Hmm. I think it was for the very well-off, like the Swiss and Germans who came here in their own private planes. Oh. So sooner or later, Gould will run out of room. But he takes off every morning. At least he has since we've been here. One of these days, he's not going to make it. Which is exactly what he's been waiting for. What do you mean? Here he goes. Richard, what did you mean? About what? Gold. You're talking like he wants to crash or something. Well, why does he use this runway? When he could use any of the roads outside of town. Or are you hoping he will crash? Of course not. Well, you do resent him being in Rosas. I'd just like him to go away and leave us alone. But he's the only person we have to talk to besides the Rivera. Why does he have to stay here, though? He could live at any one of the resort towns along the coast. There's dozens of them. Well, I'm glad he's around. Well, with him being a doctor... There he goes. He always waits until the last second before he lifts off. Any more about the idea of gold assisting me when the time comes? No. But what about the practicante? He's only a nurse, Richard. But he's very good. When you ran into him last week, did you mention it? I never saw the practicante. I mean, gold. You met him at the gallery while I was having my test. Oh, yes. That's right. Well, did the topic come up in the conversation? No, not really. Ah, Forrester. What brings you here? I didn't know you cared for Salvador Dali. I don't. Then why are you wandering around his museum? I'm waiting for Judith. I see. Please, sit down. Stunning, aren't they? Hmm? His paintings. I could look at them for hours. I love how his body is constantly... Mutate and reshape themselves. They remind me of a collection of, I don't know, newsreels from hell. You're serious, aren't you? Yes. In a way, we might be his future. I hope not. Well, in fact, we literally are, since he died 50 years ago. I've always believed the ultimate dystopia is the inside of your own head. Hmm. I... I hope you don't mind me changing the subject, but Judith's baby is due in about three weeks, and we were wondering if you'd mind um, taking care of her. What about the practicante? He's probably better qualified than I am. Well, I wasn't thinking of the birth so much as the, uh, you know, death. Well, what? Of course, we're, we're full of hope, but we've, we've had to learn to be realistic. How admirable of you both. Well, given the possible outcome, I think Judith would prefer someone like you to, 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 to deal with it. Why not keep the child, whatever the outcome? You can't be serious. I'm afraid I am. <laughs> but it's not done. Where, where are you going? Time to drive home. Adios, muchachos. And all in one motion, he picked up three Dali paintings that were stacked against the bench and walked out of the gallery. That was ten days ago. I haven't told Judith what Gould said about the birth because she doesn't want to hear things like that. No one does. 
I wonder if anything has happened to the practicante. What makes you say that? Well, he should be here by now. He said he'd drive in this morning with the test results. Don't worry. He'll be here soon. I hope so. I'm sure it will be good news this time. I know. It's strange, but I'm absolutely certain. I've never had any doubts all these months. How about another drink? Yes. Let's celebrate our good news. If only it could always be like this. Standing side by side on our balcony, looking out at the sea, my arm around Judith's waist. I can feel him inside. Our baby, moving around. Almost as if he was trying to touch my fingers with his. See that? No, no I, I was resting my eyes for a moment. We almost didn't make it this time. Really? What are you getting up for? I want to watch him fly off. Oh. Geneva seems like such a long time ago. It does, doesn't it? Are you glad we came here? Yes. But sometimes I wish we'd gone further south than this. Somewhere like Benidorm. Why? Because there would be a lot of people there true. It's a huge place. There might be as many as 20 people staying there for the summer. And we could have celebrated with them tonight. Well, we'll have to do it on our own. Cheers. To the test results. And to our little home away from home on the Costa Brava. Once school leaves, we'll have the whole town to ourselves. We'll lie around, naked, making love all the time. Play with the baby. Old peasants will hear about him and come down out of the hills to act out some ancient ritual. There he is. Hmm? Uh, where? He's circling over the hills. Yes, I see him. It looks like he's glowing in the sun. Because of all that stupid paint he wears. What? He's put silver stripes over everything. His helmet, flying jacket, the plane. How odd. Where does he go in his plane? I don't know. He must be doing something up there in the mountains. He's probably looting the abandoned villas. There he goes again. Off into the hills. Corfu Crete, Amalfi, Venice. We go everywhere that Mum and Dad send us. Lisbon, Mallorca, and Bordeaux. We get no choice in where we want to go. Judith's done it again, gone to sleep on the bed without taking her Valium. Better take the pills out of her hand and her... Is that a car? The practicante? No, it's nothing. Where the hell is he? Should have been here an hour ago. Or is it two hours? <laughs> Something like that. God. Maybe if I make myself another drink, I'll... It's her. That girl. Always hanging around with Gould. I wonder if they're lovers. She's standing in the sunlight on the observation roof of the Club Nautico, looking at the mountains. Almost as if she's waiting for him to return. You go out? Oh, uh, yes. Mrs. Forrester's asleep. If the practicante comes, please send him up. See, si. I hope it is good news. If it is, we're planning to celebrate tonight. Judith wants to open up all the nightclubs. Hmm. Good luck. Forrester walks into the sunlight, climbing over the first of the sand dunes that fill the street. He stands on the roof of a submerged car and looks at the line of empty hotels. Hmm. I was here once before. When I was very young. Even then, the town was only half filled with tourists. Many hotels had closed. Wow. Forrester jumps from the car roof and sets off along the beach road towards the runway. 
The immaculate sand runs down to the water, free at last of cigarette butts and bottle tops, as clean and soft as milled bone. My mother told me that when she was a child, the town had been so crowded that she couldn't see the sand on the beach. Forty years ago, it was like an epidemic of fear when everyone became aware that the world's population was dropping like a stone. Some experts say that Europe's current population of 200,000 will be gone within a generation. It's strange that I feel so calm about it all. I mean, Judith and I could be the last tourists this town ever sees. From the bank of the canal, Forrester looks up at the white hull of the Club Nautico. There is no sign of the young woman. He goes inside an abandoned restaurant and at the bar pours himself a glass of fundador. It's so easy to have a child. Easy, yeah. I mean, every time we turn around, Judith is pregnant. Or at least it seems that way. As Forrester gazes out the window, he notices that two continuous lines have been painted in fluorescent silver across the metal footbridge that runs over the canal. He also notices how the silver lines cross the road and climb the steps of the hotel, disappearing into the lobby. The trouble is that the kids, our children, they've all been... Go ahead, say it. Not normal. Yeah. Unnatural. Deformed. Forrester doesn't understand why I live in a Venus hotel with its garish facade, pornographic decor, and sex films that run continuously on closed-circuit TV. Venus hotels were built by governments around the world who desperately hoped that they would help produce more children. But they didn't. I can still see our first child. A little girl. She was as blonde as the sun. Except her eyes were defective. The optic nerves completely exposed. And, as if that wasn't bad enough, her sex, her her genitalia was... No, no, all wrong. Feeling the alcohol surge through him, Forrester sways through the hot sunlight. He knows the young woman is waiting for him somewhere around the hangar. She almost seems to be encouraging him with her flirtation. Damn it. I've got silver paint all over my hands. Maybe I can rub it off of my shirt. The young woman emerges from the hangar and stands in the open doorway. Uh, Her intelligent but somehow mongoloid face is hidden by heavy sunglasses. A squat chin and high forehead fronted by a carapace of black glass. Hello. My name is Richard. Richard Forrester. Forrester is certain that she has been hoping he would come. Inside her black shawl, she moves her hands about like a schoolgirl. She's aware that he is the only man in town at that moment. What's your name? Come on, don't be shy. Forrester smears the last of the silver paint over his cheeks and nose and moves closer to the woman. I want to be your friend. Hmm? When he touches her in the shoulder, she looks with sudden alarm at his luminous contours. Forrester grabs her, pushing her back into the darkness. She stumbles, falls, her sunglasses clattering to the floor. I bet you can be real friendly when you want to. He looks down at the young woman, scrabbling at his feet for her sunglasses, one hand trying to hide her eyes from him. Listen, I really have to go. Why didn't you tell me you were blind? And while Forrester scrambles across the runway, the woman finds her glasses with their fractured lenses and puts them back on. Gould's plane circles the Club Nautico. The panels of its silver fuselage reflecting the sun like a faceted mirror. Something's not right. I can tell. Don't ask me how I know. I just do. She's been crying for a while now. And every time she shudders, it shakes me up. Not a lot. But just enough to keep me awake. Where he is. Senor Forrester. Yes. 
I look all over for you. Mrs. Forrester has gone. Where? To Venus Hotels. When did this happen? About two hours ago, right after the practicant leave. She ran out of here. Oh, my God. <sighs> Judith, where are you? Can you hear me? If you can hear me, please say something. What are you doing here? I don't know. I had to go somewhere. Yeah, but, but why pick up Venus Hotel? Why not? They're obscene. I mean, look at the murals. <laughs> I kind of like it. Don't give me that. You've never set foot in one of these hotels before today. Well, maybe it's time I did. What's that supposed to mean? You want a drink? It's vodka from Finland. No, thanks. How come you have makeup on your face? Ah, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's paint, silver paint. <laughs> it makes you look like an old-fashioned rock star. I picked it up on the footbridge over the canal. What were you doing there? Well, um, I was uh, looking for gold. <gasps> but he's flying. <laughs> How many did you take? Zoom, zoom, zoom. Judith, <laughs> tell me how many pills you took. Just a few. Let's get out of here. What do you think of my dress? It makes you look like a whore. Good. Because that's how I feel. Let's go. No. We can talk back at our hotel. I'm sick of talking. Don't you understand? We must be doing something wrong. Every time we try to have a child, it turns out wrong somehow. Come on. Don't touch me. Please, <laughs> Judith. Oh, leave me alone. Where are you going? Oh. Judith, come back here. Don't worry. I got her, Forrester. She'll sleep till morning. Do you have anything to sedate her? Yes. Good. You'll need to keep her calm for the next few days. Let's go out on the balcony. It was lucky you were waiting in the lobby. I heard her yelling. I thought I'd better come help. Drink? No, thanks. These days, we're all wearing our war paint. Mm, oh, yes. Somehow I got it on me this afternoon. You were at the hangar just before I landed. That's right. Carmen told me that you accidentally stepped on her glasses. Oh, uh, y yes, I, I did, as a matter of fact. I I was trying to reassure her. She seemed to be worried that, uh, that you were late. I'm having to fly further inland now. She's nervous when I'm not around. Well, I, I imagine she is, being blind. The Spanish would kill her if they ever found out. What will happen to her when, when you have to leave? Carmen will be all right by then. Hmm. How long do you think it will last? What's that? You were staring at the runway. Ah. Another section has fallen into the sea. Yes. There's a little bit more gone every day. Now. What about this baby? What about it? I assume the test results were... Yes. It has the same defects as all the rest. I'll have to get the practicante to deal with it. Why? You know why. Forrester, it's a fair question. Which of us can really decide who has the defects? The mothers seem to know. But are they right? I am beginning to think that a massacre of the innocents has taken place that literally out Herod's Herod. What else can we do with them? Look, I want you to come flying with me tomorrow. 
I don't know. I I think I better keep an eye on Judith. Uh, the Therveras can look after her. Besides, she'll sleep all day. Well, you'll find it very interesting. Okay. Looks like we're headed up the valley. Those foothills in the distance must be the start of the Pyrenees. Nothing much down below. Even though the land looks like it would make good farming. No cattle, no people, no much... Over of... there! What? To your left! To your left! The hills. Sections of the paths and farm tracks have been sprayed with phosphorescent paint. The silver panels make the side of the valley look like some crazy quilt. <sighs> so that's what he's been doing on his flights. Turning the hills into a huge pop art display. What's going on? Why is he changing course? He's spraying. He's painting the side of this mountain in silver. Down below! What did you say? Look down at the steer! There it is. At the foot of the mountain. Looks like a... Like a miniature bison with its shaggy hair. <sighs> Obviously a mutant. It also looks very dazed and confused. Wonder how it's managed to survive this long without being able to see. It's running up the hill, stumbling right and left, moving like it was drunk or something. Wait a second. The steer has stopped at the line of silver paint. Now it's following the silver path up the mountain. Look at it go. It, it's as if that animal could see. So, how long have you been herding cattle? Since the winter. Somehow a handful escaped the farmer's machetes, and I noticed them following the airplane one day. At first, I couldn't figure out how. Then, I realized that I'd sprayed some old landing light reflector paint in the plane. Highly phosphorescent stuff. Will I ever get it off me? Not in a while. I'm always covered with the stuff when I come back from a flight. <laughs> how, how big was that herd up by the lake in the mountains? I'd say six, maybe seven hundred. No wonder you look so tired. It must be hard work doing this day after day. No, I don't think of it as work. It's more like something that has to be done. Hmm. That's what I don't understand. I mean, why save them since they can't survive on their own? They're extremely hardy, and by next winter they'll be able to outrun and outthink everything else around them. You don't know that for sure. Look at Carmen. She's managed to keep herself going here for years without being able to see a thing. She's still a mutant. Maybe, but she's a very bright girl. She has a huge collection of watches with luminous dials, hundreds of them. And even though they're set at different times, she's got them all working together. Like a gigantic computer. Really? God only knows what overlit world nature is preparing for her. But I suppose we won't be around to see it. Hmm. More brandy? No. One glass of fundador is enough for me. Gould, are you saying, in effect, that the child Judith is carrying at this moment is not deformed? That's right. It's like the so-called population decline that we've all accepted as the truth. In fact, there hasn't been a decline, except in the sense that we've been slaughtering our offspring. Over the past 50 years, the birth rate has gone up, not down. How do you figure that? Try to keep an open mind for a moment. I am, but believe me, it's hard. Okay. We have this vastly increased sexuality and an unprecedented fertility. Even your wife has had seven children. That's right. Yet why? Isn't it obvious that we've embarked on a huge replacement program? Though, sadly, the people we're replacing are, in fact, ourselves. Uh, are you serious? Yes, I think our job is to repopulate the world with our successors. Come to the door. We can't hear you. What's the matter, Senor Cervera? You must come. 
La señora has the baby. Let's go. It feels so good to be out. I mean, I can kick my legs, roll back and forth. I can do all kinds of things. Wait a second. More people in the next room? I better try and scare them off. There he is. Yes. He looks strong and healthy. Except for his eyes. What are they talking about? I can see fine. Both of them glow as bright as the moon. What are you going to do? Take him outside. Why can't you give him to me? Because he's my child. What's going on? He's picked me up. And we're leaving. Take it easy. I'm not a doll. As Forrester crosses the bridge over the canal, Carmen walks out of the hangar, almost as if she has been expecting him. They meet on the runway, and he puts the baby in her arms. He walks away quickly, without looking back once. It feels so good to be with her, because she's like me. She feels warm, kind, and gentle. Hello, Mother. You ready? I'm all set. Okay, then let's go. I hope you're up for the drive. I've never felt better. Good. Cause it's a long way to Geneva. And it's been only a few weeks since... The birth. You can say it, Richard. Right. I hope when you paid the practicante, you gave them something extra. They expect it when... they have to take care of things. Hmm. Don't worry. I looked after everything. Good. Do you know why Gold is late taking off this morning? I think some more of the runway was washed away in that storm last night. Oh. But one thing I know for sure, he'll keep flying as long as he has to. Low Flying Aircraft by J.G. Ballard. Dramatized by Brian Wade. Starring Nikki Guadagni as Judith, Joe Ziegler as Richard, and Michael Hogan as Dr. Gould. With Ramiro Puerta and Lisa Yamanaka. The series script editor is Sandra Rabinovich. Casting consultant, Beth Russell. Original music was composed and performed by Timothy Clark. The recording engineer was Glenn McLaughlin, sound effects by Kathy Perry, and production assistant Nina Callahan. Low Flying Aircraft was produced and directed at Studio G in Toronto by series executive producer William Lane. Next week, a question of re-entry. Until then, I'm Barbara Budd. Good night.